What bending style would you want most? Between fire, earth, water, and air, you've got a lot of great choices. But out of all of them, which one is going to make you the most powerful? Avatar The Last Airbender introduced us to a fantastical world full of amazing abilities. And thanks to Netflix, the show is back on everyone's radar. So this video is all about the awesome powers from the show and discussing which bending style is actually the most powerful. The answer may surprise you. Let's get into it. How did Katara say it? Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But we know now that the Fire Nation was really only able to take over thanks to a magic space rock in the sky that enhanced their abilities tenfold. Without it, the four elemental bending styles would be about even, right? Wrong! If you really examine the four bending styles, you'll see that there is a clear ranking from least powerful to most powerful. And today, we're going to answer that age-old question of which bending style is the most powerful out of all of them. So, okay, to begin, let's start at the bottom of the power charts. Now, mind you, we're not calling any bending style weak, as they're all super powerful in their own ways. But this list is examining what bending style would make you the most powerful in the real world. So because of that, we'll start with firebending, which is an amazing ability, but probably won't do you a lot of favors today. Like the way we've seen it depicted, it's a very aggressive attacking style without a lot of defensive moves. A good firebender won't really think about defense, but rather just attack more. It's easy to consider firebending as a product of rage and aggression, because that's how we saw the Fire Lord and the Fire Nation utilize it in Avatar The Last Airbender. But leave it to Iroh to put things into perspective. To hear him explain it, firebenders use overpowering force tempered by an unflinching will to accomplish tasks and desires. To be a strong firebender means you have to have something in you driving you to success. And all of that is great. I, I mean, you got your bending style from dragons after all, how cool is that? But there are just too many downsides to being a firebender. Unless you have a strong goal or desire in life to fuel you, your flame would sputter out with a whimper. And can you imagine how hard it would be to hide firebending from the world? If you suddenly start spouting flames out of your fingers, you're gonna turn a few heads. Next up, let's talk about earthbending. As powerful and dominating as it appears, it actually comes from a place of patience. To be a powerful earthbender, it doesn't necessarily take a ripped physique like Boomy, although that certainly helps, but rather it takes the ability to listen to the world around you. A good earthbender will wait and listen for the opportune moment for their opponent to make a mistake and then strike efficiently and effectively. Humans originally learned how to earthbend by observing and imitating the geokinetic abilities of blind badger moles who live in the mountains. Those big fellas knew how to listen to the earth around them in order to move efficiently, and it's also a huge factor why Toph is such an extraordinary earthbender. Because she's blind, she relies on her sense of hearing and her sense of touch to move and fight, and it allows for a deeper connection with the Earth. And in the real world, think of all the advantages earthbending could bring you. You know that road construction that always slows down traffic around your home? Well, you could fix it easily with a few snaps of your fingers. But as the world becomes more technologically advanced, it seems that general earthbending would get left behind. Unless you manage to learn how to metal bend like Toph did. Besides, imagine all the destruction you would cause by moving large chunks of earth around. Which brings me to the second most powerful bending style, water bending. Overall, I think there's a general stigma around waterbending because it doesn't seem as aggressive or powerful as earth or fire. But not only is water one of the most powerful forces on earth, it also comes with some extreme benefits that make it a bending style that should not be messed with in any circumstance. A really powerful waterbender could not only bend the water in your nearest brand name water filter, but also could suck water and moisture right out of the air if necessary. We've even seen Katara bend sweat before, and that is not even getting into the scariest bending style of all, bloodbending. By far, bloodbending is the most twisted form of bending around, and if a waterbender was evil enough, they could use bloodbending to even block people's bending abilities. And sure, that's the negative side of waterbending, but also don't forget how much good it can do too. Waterbending is also known for healing injuries, which is incredibly helpful in life. That makes it way more powerful than the other bending styles. 
So yeah, water bending is an extremely powerful bending style that is useful both in Avatar's world and in our own. But it's not the most powerful, and since there's only one element left, I think you know where I'm going with this. That's right, the most powerful bending ability and one of the rarest abilities is the ability to click that subscribe button, am I right everybody? Yeah, 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 finger guns, boom, 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 click, 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 and hit that notification bell, woo! I think our perception of airbenders will forever be skewed because of Aang. For the entirety of the original show, Aang was this fun-loving, mostly happy kid who went with the flow and had a generally positive and peaceful attitude. And because Aang was the Avatar and we expected him to be this powerful warrior, it kind of overshadowed just how powerful airbending actually was. But I'll say this now, I think airbending is the most powerful bending style. Sure, the air nomads are peaceful monks and would never do anything to rise up against the world, but if they all suddenly drank evil juice and turned against humanity, well, let's just say that war wouldn't have lasted a hundred years. And all of this is because of an airbender's versatility and lack of major weaknesses. Airbending takes the potential destructive force of fire and earth, but it makes it into something precise and even more dangerous. You might find yourself in a situation where there's no earth to bend, or creating a fire would result in a catastrophe but there will always be air around you to draw from. It's more elegant and graceful than waterbending and can be used as both a forceful attack or an unbreakable defense. It's the most well-rounded bending technique in the way that it could overwhelm your opponents but also provide an incredible defense. Just imagine if you had airbending in the real world. You would have no limitations to what you could accomplish. You'll move faster, live better, and most importantly, not draw a lot of attention to yourself, assuming you don't have any, you know, like blue arrow tattoos on your forehead or something. And don't even get me started on what would happen if you wanted to become evil. Zaheer from Season 3 of Legend of Korra was the season's big bad, and he showed just how deadly airbending could be when done right. I mean, just ask the Earth Queen. If you don't remember, Zaheer literally sucked the air out of her lungs until she suffocated. Which is easily one of the worst things we've ever seen on the show. And sure, airbending may not have that next generation upgrade that the other bending styles do, but Zaheer did learn to fly on his own, which was just an incredible moment. Seriously, do not mess with airbending. So as of right now, airbending is the most powerful bending technique, but I'm not saying it will stay that way. Things could change over time. Because if there is one thing that the Avatar universe has taught us, it's that things don't stay the same. They evolve and adapt to bring a better balance to the world. The Air Nomads were wiped out by the Fire Nation, but the universe wouldn't keep it that way forever. The Legend of Korra saw everyday people suddenly start developing airbending abilities to correct the damage done by Fire Lord Ozai's crazy war and balance was finally restored. This implies that the universe will never let one bending technique become more powerful than another. If one bending style suddenly gets a fantastic new ability, it's a safe bet that the other bending techniques will evolve too. And we've seen that concept represented in the show with benders learning how to use their abilities in different ways. At first, we just saw firebenders being able to lightning bend, which soon became more common in the world of Legend of Korra. Toph evolved earthbending all on her own when she figured out how to metal bend, which would change earthbending forever. Fast forward to Korra's time and all the police use metal bending. If that wasn't enough, earthbending evolved once again in Legend of Korra as lava bending became more of a commonplace thing. This is how those bending styles grew. It started starts with just one person mastering an ability, and then more and more people learn how to do it. Talk about progress! And if you think about it, waterbending evolved with the concept of bloodbending and chi blocking, so it's scary to think what will come next in that evolution. But that brings me to airbending. Since airbending was wiped out for so long, it hasn't had the time to evolve to its next state. If I had to speculate, I would imagine airbending will evolve to the point where it could control other elements. Well now hold on a second, I'm not crazy, just, just think about it, okay? Oxygen is such an important part of both fire and water that why couldn't a really strong airbender learn to harness those elements too? It's a natural next step. If that were the case, then surely it would be no question. Airbending would be the most powerful technique.
Well, what do you think? Do you think airbending is the most powerful bending style or does another reign supreme? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome Avatar content like this. Thanks for watching CBR. We'll see you next time.